Uh oh. Don't worry, you're not recording. I'm recording. First things first. You stuff your body. Well, not your body. You stuff your monster's body or your little doll's body. I don't want to say it's a monster. And you started stuffing your attachments. What tends to happen is because we're getting chunks of the stuffing and we're pushing it in, you kind of start to get like lumpiness. Whenever that happens, because that will happen, or let's say you really want the bottom to be nice and round, but the head, you don't want it to get bigger. All of that stuffing can move. So for instance, I have this weird like lump happening on the body. I'm just gonna kind of like push it around so that way it gets like a little bit more even, kind of like check it out. I'm gonna squeeze in the middle of the head so that way it kind of gives them a little bit more of a neck. You know, I want the head to be round, not so like pointy shaped. So I'm just gonna kind of squeeze the stuffing there. And you kind of just like look at the little body, see how you like it. Maybe you want more stuffing, maybe you want less, you know? For those of you that are going to be making those little bean bag, um, pouches you have to have that in before you do this next step before we close up this hole so i'm gonna get my needle ready per use i'm gonna use red thread are you guys gonna use thread that doesn't match your sock no why because it doesn't go with the color yeah not because of a grade not because i will steal your shoes if your thread doesn't match it's because you care. You care about this looking your best. So while you're watching me get my thread ready, because this is riveting, I have a question for you. Every time we start, we always have an ugly fly knot. How do you think I'm going to hide that so that way no one can see it on my doll? Flip it inside out. You're getting closer. Cut it. It would take the knot away. I want the knot to still be there. How do I hide it? We did it for our little pin cushion pillow so that way no one saw. Start from the inside. Yeah, yeah. You're always going to have that ugly fly knot. We need it to be the ugly fly knot so it sticks in all of the holes of our sock but we don't want it to be noticeable. When we end, just like we did uh, on our little pillow, there's that little bit of a tail. I'll show you how to hide that because I don't want you to cut too close to the knot either. But this can only be hidden from the inside. Do you guys remember the name of the stitch that we did at the top? Not cross stitch. That is a stitch name though. Good job knowing that. We went from one side and then we went over, over stitch. Good job. I heard the whispers. You're welcome. Here's one thing that I really, really want to emphasize. You have to close the hole. All of my students, sometimes they're like, oh, my arm fits like right over that gap. I'm just going to attach the arm. Because we cut it. Well, because I could. Because there's that fracture of the webbing, of the knitting of the sock, it will continue to grow underneath your arm. So you really want to close it up so that way it stops. It's just there. So I'm starting from the inside. I'm just picking a part. It doesn't matter where you start. I kind of like look at the hole from the side and I'm just gonna go on one corner. Good morning. Good morning. I'm gonna tuck that fly knot underneath so that we no one can see it. And now I'm doing the over stitch. So I'm not doing the running stitch, not what we did before. I'm going to go, let me zoom in a little bit more on this because it's a little bit easier to see. I'm going to start at one end, 
I'm putting the needle all the way through. Think about it like a spiral bound notebook. I'm going to be doing this with the thread. It's just spiraling around that hole. So I'm going to pull it through. Again, the overstitch, it gets nice and tight. I'm going to go over, right, across the hole. Come back through. Just like before, I'm never getting too close to that edge. The, the thread might just rip off. So I'm going over, back through. So here's that first stitch. Remember, just like when we did our pillow. Here's that over stitch. And I'm going to pull tight. This is going to be ugly. It's going to look like your monster or your soft little person has a scar. That's okay. No one's going to see it. So again, I'm going to go over. I'm going to have my needle go all the way, basically across. Right? Keep tucking that fly knot in. Here's that overstitch. And again, the, the reason why the overstitch works really well, pull really tight. Don't let it be loose. Your overstitch shouldn't be this big. You want to pull that thing tight. Now, when you go to do your next stitch, that's probably going to open up a little bit again. That's okay. Going across. My needle goes under again. Right? I'm going to go over. Over the hole. And then I pull really tight. You're slowly just closing up that hole. Okay? It's slowly closing that gap. So I'm going to do this really quickly. If you guys are ready at this point, you can start doing this as well. Again, don't get too close to the edge. You don't want to be like a million miles away from the edge, but you also don't want to be too close. Like I'm not grabbing sock from like back here on his body. I'm still getting close to the hole. Again, don't worry if you're not here yet. I'll help you with this part. I'll remind you of this part. This video will be available for purchase on DVD and 4K. I'm just kidding. So again, I'm pulling really tightly. I also kind of hold the thread because if I let it go, it kind of loosens up that stitch. I'll hold it just a little bit. That hole is getting smaller, slowly but surely. And again, there's really no like, oh, you need to have this many stitches. It's kind of to preference. You just need to make sure this hole is closed because it'll keep getting larger and larger as you're working on your little guy, your little person. So this is very important. Once you're done stuffing, you gotta close the hole, close the body. And you can see I'm not being very careful with my stitches. See like there's a little bit kind of coming out. There's kind of like this little scar happening. That's okay. The arm's gonna cover it. Now, one thing to know, my arms, super big. Not just muscular, big. If you have a hole and where that, let's say it's a horn or you have an arm and the arm is very tiny, you gotta think about that when you're doing the overstitch. No one's gonna see how ugly this is. So like my stitch is almost like from my nail to my knuckle. So that's a pretty wide gap. But my arm is very big as well. If your arm, like the end of your arm is very tiny, think about that. You might need to close the stitch a little differently to get that whole tiny in one spot. Strong again. We're gonna end the same way. Just like before, I'm coming out on one side. I'm just gonna find either a stitch, but you know, our stitches match our socks. That's a little difficult. I sometimes will just grab some sock. Yeah, I would go right now just in case. 
I'll just grab a little bit of the sock. No one's going to see this. Through the loop. And I'll do that one more time, same spot. Grab a little bit of the sock. Oops. Needle through the loop. Now, for the tail, this is going to be covered by an arm. So I don't necessarily need to hide it, but when we start attaching the arms, you will. And I'll show you that in a second. Let's talk about arms very quickly. Depending on how you stuff, you can either have your arms be really, really chunky, give your monster some uh, muscle tone. Ooh, look at that, he's been lifting weights. Yeah, that was like a turkey leg. So, you could stuff it a lot fully, or some people like to stuff the hands and not stuff the rest of it. This is what will happen. This, these are two outcomes of that. Either one works. It really just depends on how you want your sock monster to look. If you stuff the arm all the way to the top, when you attach it, he's always ready for a hug. I know. He's coming in hot. Because you've stuffed it all the way to the edge, when you attach, he's going to do kind of like this, hey, can I come to the party? You might want that. You might want how that looks. Some of you, especially if you're attaching like ears, like bunny ears or something long, this may not be what you want. Like let's say this was an ear. You may not want it straight up. That's when you'll kind of decide, okay, I'll stuff a little bit, but this whole top portion, I'm going to leave without stuffing. What this does is when you attach it, his arms will kind of just lay down. It's either or. Like, there's no requirement of how the arms have to look. It's your choice. You're going to decide how you want him to stand, how you want his arms to look. With this one, though, when you go to attach it, just know, okay, if I'm going to attach it right here, I want his arms to lay like this. You know, you really want to pay attention to where the arm is going to go. If you're like attaching it in a different way, just, you know, kind of check it out before you start. So let me show you about attaching. Now, some of you will have these nice crisp edges because you've done like the top of the sock maybe. Some of you will have uneven edges. If your edges are uneven, it's just like the pillow. Push down, you know, you're stuffing a little bit. Fold it in, right? We want to create a crisp edge. So that way when it's on your sock monster, no one will see. And also think about the stitching. Now mine you can obviously see, but do I want to have it where that stitching is underneath so it's not as noticeable, that seam isn't as noticeable? Do you want it to be up in the air? You're going to kind of decide. Now, obviously you would get more thread than I am, but I don't want to keep you here for hours. Same thing. We always are going to struggle with hiding the ugly fine out. We need it to be ugly, but it needs to be hidden. I'm going to use my chunky muscular arm, the one that doesn't have a neat edge. Push some of that stuffing down. I'm going to roll that edge in. Remember, I want to give it a neat edge. I got to hide that ugly fly knot. Just like before, I'm going to start on the inside. And now here's where it gets different, guys. So everyone look up here real quick. I rolled in, right? The ugly fly knot's going to be hidden because this is going to go inside. I'm going to cover that ugliness, that scar that we just made. I want to cover it. That's why we made that hole, so that way something will go over it. How you stitch this, you kind of have to like have it laying on the body. Some people like to like put it under the arm. You're still doing 
the over stitch just like we did that pillow you're still doing the same thing here I am here's my ugly fly knot it's on the inside I'm gonna get my needle I'm gonna grab some body I'm gonna turn my needle I'm like pushing and pushing it against the stuffing pushing it against the body the arm Ooh, that's hard to see. There we go. There we go. That's better. When I pull it through, there's that overstitch. Again, the reason we use the overstitch is because you pull really tight and no one can see it. It really gets sucked in. Now, this one, I advise you to do quite a few. Grab some body, grab some arm or appendage attachment. And then pull, pull, pull. Grab some body. Pull, pull, pull. And you're kind of just working in a circle. You're working around the body, you're working around the arm. Now, because your thread is going to match, no one will see if you're like one stitch is really long, one stitch is kind of short. You just really want to pull those stitches tightly. And you're just going to go around. Grab body, grab some more. Grab some body, grab some more. And you're always kind of like going inside. Yeah. You could maybe do it the opposite way. I always go this way because I like to get my needle to get some of the body. And then I go inside the arm from underneath. And I poke my needle through. Be careful. Your thumb likes to be stabbed. It hasn't told you this, but your thumb is like, hey, you know what would be great today? Getting stabbed by my needle. Just be careful, be cautious. Pull, pull, pull. When you end, same knot, just like we've always done. Find a stitch, slide the needle underneath, and then through the loop. Because I'm running out of thread, I gotta get more. But this is what you're gonna do. Check your stuffing, rearrange, close the hole. It's gonna be ugly, right? That's gonna be an ugly scar. That's okay, your arm is, is hiding it. See if you need to fold in, like this arm, I have a nice clean edge. I don't really have to fold it, unless you don't want it that long. Like maybe it's too long for me. I'm gonna fold in to make it shorter. You can. And then what kind of stuffing for the arm do you want? A lot or a little? And that's just a matter of going around. Grab some body, grab some arm, and just keep going all the way around the little arm till you get back. If you run out of thread, that's okay, stop. Put the ugly fly knot underneath, start again, and keep going, okay? I'm gonna walk around if you need help. If you don't need help, that is okay. To hide the tail, because whenever we do that ending uh, knot through the loop, I never want you cutting too close. It's just a matter of getting your needle and just pushing that tail in to the sock, into the stitch, underneath the arm, you're just getting it out of the way. You're just going to hide it. It's nothing too crazy. Okay? Okay, I'm going to put our music back on. If you need help, if you don't need help, then you're good. Wait, I was like, where are we? 10.05. Yeah, we got time. 